Hey, what's up? So in this video, I'm going to talk to you about my personal uh, feelings and personal experiences uh, when I was in Chiang Mai. I'm going to talk to you about the stuff that I like about Chiang Mai as well as the stuff that I don't really like. I think we need to weigh the pros as well as the cons, uh, giving our best and honest opinion as well as a different point of view so we can learn about the world and to make a informed decision, not just uh, waving about the good stuff. If you're only visiting Chiang Mai for a short time, say a couple of days or a couple of weeks, you might not notice a lot of the dislike that I'm going to talk to you about. Uh, I'm talking about like if you're staying in Chiang Mai long term. I'm not a expert in Chiang Mai. I only stay there for four months. Uh, so if you uh, disagree with me or you've been living in Chiang Mai for a longer period of time, longer than me, and you disagree, uh, feel free to leave a comment below. And also, the other thing is that I'm Thai. I speak Thai. Uh, so I don't need to be in a place like Chiang Mai where there's a lot of English speaking people. I can pretty much live anywhere in Thailand and I don't have any problem communicating with uh, people. So keep that in mind. This is uh, coming from a person that, uh, that could speak the Thai language and understand the Thai uh, culture. The first dislike uh, about Chiang Mai for me that I really don't like is that, and this, this could be a good thing depending who you are. My first dislike uh, is that it's very, very touristy. Uh, there's a lot of Western amenities. If you've been following my, uh, my videos, my Chiang Mai series, beginning of the each video, like for example, you, you can see a whole bunch of people on Segway. I've never seen so many Segway in one spot before. Uh, the police use them, the Chinese tourists use them. This might be a good thing if you like, um, if you like Western amenities, you like a Western fast food chain, you want to eat at uh, Starbucks, uh, you want to eat at Burger King, McDonald's, uh, Subway. So. Chiang Mai it has a lot of Western amenities. Also, uh, there's a lot of travel agencies in Chiang Mai. You go down to my apartment lobby, there's brochures of uh, places to visit. You hop on the Duk Duk, there's more brochures, there's posters. But to be fair, uh, all Duk Duk are like this uh, pretty much anywhere in uh, Thailand. Most of them, uh, some places they don't do it. You go to the old city in the middle of the Chiang Mai. There's brochures and bike rental place. There's, uh, you know, there's brochures in pretty much every couple houses down the street. There are a lot of uh, tourists. There's like a lot of Americans, uh, Europeans, Chinese, Japanese, Koreans. Pretty much everyone around the world go to Chiang Mai. For example, if you look at this video, I was just standing in front of the one the night market there and there were bus loads of uh, Chinese tourists coming in. There were at least like 20 tour buses going to this, uh, this single hotel which is right next to this night market. This is not the same Chiang Mai that people talk about 5, 10, 20 plus years ago. The Chiang Mai that I'm talking about right now at the time this recording is not the same uh, as many years ago this is this is no longer a small town this is a big uh, growing city okay so number two on my list uh, is the the air quality and the traffic congestion the air quality in Chiang Mai is a uh, serious issue I'm one of those people that that think I'm invisible before I came to Chiang Mai I read and I heard a lot about the air quality in Chiang Mai and I'm one of those people that don't listen to those advices and I think I'm invisible until I came here and experienced it myself. Let me assure you that whatever people are talking about about the air quality is true and is a serious uh, issue especially during the burning season. I would go even further with the uh, with the high season when there's more uh, tourists coming to Chiang Mai and there's more people on the roads. So I would avoid the months of the burning season and I would even go further and say I would avoid the, the high season when there's more uh, tourists coming in, there's more people on the roads. So, But that's me. Don't get me wrong, you can still come to Chiang Mai anytime you want. Uh, I never in my life have to worry about the air quality. 
I was very lucky until I moved to Thailand. And this is uh, this is something that I never thought that it's gonna be an issue uh, before I came here, but it is. I uh, had my first uh, carbon monoxide poisoning in Bangkok before I uh, I came to Chiang Mai. The side effect was um, dizziness for. 30 minutes, um, a problem breathing, uh, and I still have it today if I go outside and I'm inhaling all this exhaust fume and I might have some like tightening in my upper body. Air quality in terms of the fumes from the cars is going to be an issue, especially in very uh, congested uh, roads inside Thailand as well as anywhere around the world. But I never had any issue with this until I came here. When I got my first uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. It wasn't serious that I need to be hospitalized or I wanted to see a doctor, but um, it was enough for me to uh, to buy a mask to wear, and <laughs> and I have this mask, so it's like this. So if you buy a mask, make sure you buy a mask with the N95 uh, approved. Uh, this mask is. It's, uh, it's made by 3M in Innovation. And there's they also have the N99. The N95 means it, it uh, removes, filter 95% of the pollutions. Uh, the N99, it means it removes 99% of the pollution. Uh, I prefer to have N110, uh, but uh, this is what they have. So I buy this one because um, because it's, it's more uh, portable. You can fold it and you put it in your pocket. You can walk around with it. The N99 uh, is more bulkier. You can't fold it and it's harder for me to carry. But uh, but yeah, so now I have to carry this around with me um, in Thailand if I need it. I don't wear this 100% of the time when, I was, when I'm outside. Right now I'm in Hoa Hin. I haven't wear this yet once, but if I'm in uh, Bangkok or in Chiang Mai, uh, if I ever go back to Chiang Mai, I will uh, have this in my pocket. If I find myself in a very congested uh, area with a lot of uh, vehicles and fumes coming out, I'm gonna pull it out and I'm gonna I'm gonna have to wear this because I I don't want to take any chances. So this is the first time I have to do this in my life while wearing a mask. It's not just me. If you go to Chiang Mai, Bangkok, you will see there's uh, expats, foreigners including ties that have masks. A lot of the ties, they wear surgical masks. Those, they don't uh, filter out uh, all the pollution. Uh, if you're going to wear masks, make sure you wear one that is uh, N95 uh, certified or N99 certified. So because they are certified to remove the tiniest pollution particles. And again, I don't wear the, the mask 100% of the time when I'm in Chiang Mai. I only wear it inside or around very congested areas in Chiang Mai. These are the parts of Chiang Mai I have problems with and I try to avoid them as much as possible. Other parts of Chiang Mai, they're fine. Uh, I live about 50 yards away from uh, these major roads and I didn't have any problem. But if I'm right next to, to the traffic, then I will notice the exhaust fumes. I think I'm a pretty tough dude, at least in my head anyways. I used to work in a factory uh, on and off for three to four years. You know, inside the factory is uh, labor intensive work. I used to stand eight to 10 hours per day, sometime more. And during the summer, there's no air conditioning. Uh, during the winter, there's no heating and you're standing all day long. Uh, and I can get used to that. I can also get used to the tropical heat in Thailand, but there's some things that I cannot get used of and that's to breathe in uh, pollution. I can never uh, get used to that. With all that said um, about Chiang Mai, I'm glad that I stayed in Chiang Mai for four months because I get to see how things were during the burning season and the high season. I first moved there. Uh, lived there in January and uh, my last month was in April. So the first month in January and February was very bad in terms of the air quality. Now, uh, during the last month in April, I'm glad that I stick around that long because I realized why a lot of people love Chiang Mai. 
because once the, the low season started in uh, around April, uh, there were less tourists. So less tourists, less people, less people on the roads. The burning season uh, stopped and the low season started in around April. Things got a lot better and I finally realized why people love Chiang Mai so much. Burning season uh, start between January to April. Every uh, first couple months of the year, there's going to be the burning season. What happened during the burning season is that the farmers in Chiang Mai, around the Chiang Mai city, start to burn their, uh, their rice field so they can prepare for the new season. What happens and the side effects with the burning of the rice field is that there are a lot of smog and smoke. You can see it all around the city. For me, during the burning season, it didn't affect me as much in terms of the air quality. The congestion of the traffic and the roads uh, bothered me the most. Uh, the burning seasons, I didn't uh, notice too much of a difference. I noticed that the sky is not blue and most of the time you're, you're not going to see the sun. And that's the only thing I noticed during the burning season. Some people have problem with their uh, with their breathing. I personally I didn't have that issue, and that's probably because I live like closer inside the the city. Now I noticed once I went outside the city during the burning season, I was on the Madang River, which is like a couple hours north of Chiang Mai. That's the only time when I noticed the burning scents, the burning smell. It didn't bother me too much for the first couple hours. Hours, it did uh, became very irritating like after a couple hours you're sitting there and you're breathing it here's a clip when I was walking out outside inside the old city and you can see me walking here and this is the sky during the burning season you can see there's no blue sky you don't see the Sun uh, so if you're expecting to see some blue sky and some nice sunny day you might be disappointed Okay, so the fourth one, this is not a big deal. Uh, so the fourth thing that I don't like about Chiang Mai is that there's no beaches. You can see it in the map. Uh, so there's no uh, place to swim. Now you can, you know, rent a apartment or stay in a hotel that has a, uh, a swimming pool. And the thing is that I can't imagine how busy Chiang Mai would be if there was a beach uh, next to Chiang Mai. The fifth thing that I don't like about Chiang Mai is the, the lack of meter taxi, the lack of uh, the mass transportation system. Comparing Chiang Mai to uh, Bangkok, Bangkok has a subway, the SkyTrain, the really link. Chiang Mai, they don't have any of those. With all that said, I will eventually uh, visit Chiang Mai again when I, I don't know yet, but I will visit Chiang Mai. I'm not going to visit uh, Chiang Mai during the high season or the burning season. Uh, the months that I will visit Chiang Mai is probably after the uh, the burning season. So like around after April and May, I will visit Chiang Mai for a couple months and then leave. But again, that's just me. Uh, I'm just an old guy. If you are like a younger, you're in your 20s, your lungs are younger, uh, you can take more, you know, punishment you probably won't notice anything i'm just an old guy now i still have to watch my uh, blood pressure my cholesterol i can't eat certain things don't let me disencourage you uh there are people still living there i met with some um some uh, uh a american that lives there uh, he's been to chiang mai for over 30 years now and he's not gonna stop going there uh, i also met with another american who uh, only visit Chiang Mai uh, every time he comes visit uh, Thailand. He never visit any other uh, city in Thailand besides uh, Chiang Mai and he's been living there uh, for almost five years. If you watch the video all the way to this point, please take two seconds to give this video a thumbs up. Also, check out the 30 plus pages of free ebook about Thailand, the do's and the don'ts, information about visa, money, saving ideas, and other useful information. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe.